Bumblebee is directed by Travis Knight, the director of the wonderful stop-motion animation film Kubo and the Two Strings, and this film is a prequel to the first Transformers film that uh, premiered back in 2007, and it's also a soft reboot of that same franchise from Michael Bay, and obviously this is the first film not directed uh, by Michael Bay himself, and in this installment in the franchise, you know, on Earth, the year is 1987, and where we start off is on Cybertron. It's during the war. <coughs> Excuse me. And... Mm, oh, sorry, I had really bad... Uh, I really, I had really bad sinus congestion. But anyway, um... God damn it, where was I? The year is 18... 1987 on Earth, and the war on Cybertron is still going. It's... Getting to that point where basically um, the, the world is not sustainable and the Autobots are losing, so Optimus Prime sends Bumblebee to Earth to do two things. One, to set up a base of operations for the Autobots, you know, kind of like a safe haven for at least the meantime, and also to protect the Earth from the Decepticons, uh, because, you know, they're basically out to conquer pretty much everything, and um, while while Bumblebee is there, he meets this young girl named uh, Charlie, and the two spark a friendship. Now, just for clarification, before I start anything with my thoughts, I did not grow up officially with Transformers as a kid. I never, I never collected any of the toys, I never watched any of the cartoons, the movies, anything. I, I didn't actually get into it until the 2007 film, and then, you know, I bought a couple of the toys. But, you know, I, I still think that the 2007 film is still a good movie. It is. I think it has the best quality of the first five. And also, uh, the Michael Bay-isms are there, but they're not as consistent or, you know, colossal, uh, hit-over-your-head, uh, sort of feeling moments. Not as much. But really, I want to start with my positives, because I feel like there are quite a few in this movie. Like, for instance, with the main narrative, you can analyze it and see that the formula is definitely familiar. You, you know, it's got a feel of Iron Giant and E.T. My wife even mentioned uh, a reference to me that it, to her it feels like Lilo and Stitch, which is one of her favorite uh, Disney movies of all time. And really I can see, you know, this uh, alien being comes down to Earth, meets, uh, meets a human being, uh, most likely, uh, mostly a girl, and, or at least in a couple of uh, senses. Wait, no, it was always a guy. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway. <laughs> Um, meets them, there's this weird, uh, like, maybe out-of-place military plot, uh, somewhere in the middle, and the, the human counterpart tries to protect the alien, and vice versa, you know, it's, it's something that we've seen before, and most people can look at it and think, ah, oh, this, the, you know, the story isn't original, really, but honestly, I was okay with it, because I, to me, it felt like the movie was going back to its roots with the first movie, where a lot of the focus was on uh, Sam Witwicky, you know, Shia LaBeouf's character, and Bumblebee himself. And it, it also made sense that uh, these two characters in the movie uh, fit so well together, because Haley Steinfeld's character, um, Charlie, feels a bit like an outcast, uh, whether it's at home, at work, pretty much everywhere. And, you know, Bumblebee is one himself, so who else would he naturally bond with? And on top of that, Steinfeld is great in this role. I loved her character, that tomboy who loves uh, cars a and um, a few other things, and just, you know, the 80s music of the time. And, you know, sh she can't really interact with or involve herself with other people because of a past tragedy that involved her father, or the death of her father, and it, it's gotten so bad that, she, um, for instance, she used to be a diver, but of course she doesn't enjoy it anymore because that was, that was a part of her life that her father especially encouraged and was really proud of her uh, with, and, you know, anytime she uh, gets anywhere um, near that uh, activity, or she thinks about it, she becomes very depressed. John Cena himself, I I also thought at first was pretty awesome. You know, in the first scene, he comes across as this funny man that just so happens to be in the military, and I really enjoyed it, but almost immediately, that, that charm is just gone, and 
he becomes uh, very serious, and again, when he becomes serious, it, it felt a bit overcooked. From the opening scene on Cybertron, you can tell that the, the filmmakers decided to take a much different approach to the filmmaking than they did in the last four or five films. You know, the cinematography is crisp, the action is not filled with close-ups of metallic parts, or just this slow-mo bullshit, and you can actually feel, or at least I did, I felt each impact from every punch, sword slice, gunshot, pretty much whatever you can think of, and even with the amazing action sequences that just, that aren't just vomited onto the screen at you, but instead meticulously crafted, there, there really isn't a lot of action in this movie, and I personally liked it. It put a lot more focus on the relationship between, uh, or friendship, I should say, between Bumblebee and Charlie, and it really helped the film um, feel, or at least for me, like more of a standalone film, like it was standing on its own merits instead of being something that you can compare to the rest of the series. And, you know, it could be an action film where you can actually see the fighting, and it's not close-up, but in wide-angle shots, which, again, I love those types of movies with wide-angle shots and long takes. And you, you can also really enjoy the grounded moments. And the, the film needed to be more grounded, more, um, more condensed, because Michael Bay had blown things out of proportion, and as each film went on, they started to feel like there was less and less substance to them. Like, you know, they were part of this giant, very glossy Hollywood CGI fest, and it was just, you know, there were a few issues like uh, it feeling over-sexualized about some things, or even, even the random-ass uh, racist humor, or at least racist humor, as most people say. Um, I, I don't know why I did this. I do actually believe that a lot of the humor is racist. It's just that a lot of people don't look at it that way. They just see like, hey, that's funny. Um, but I hope that the direction that they took with Bumblebee uh, will actually be something that they do with future installments if they do actually greenlight a sequel, which I think they did, but I'm not confident enough to say that they did. I was also kind of impressed by this subplot that uh, was in the movie involving Charlie and this boy that has a crush on her. Um, I thought that it was going to go down a cliche route a couple of times, but then certain things would happen and I'd be like, okay, this isn't going uh, exactly how I expected, I like that. And then once it was, once the entire film was over and I looked at just that subplot and looked at everything in hindsight, um, you know. I personally thought, okay, this is way different than what um, film that's like this normally would do, and I really appreciate that. I'm pleasantly surprised. You could also tell that a director who has worked in animation helmed this film, because the first five films, in my opinion, you know, it didn't feel like, you know, the characters were animated. Get what I mean? You know, like, um, they just... It felt fake the entire time. There wasn't any kind of life behind their eyes, you know, their their body language, <laughs> excuse me, their facial features. I could feel it with each, with each frame, especially the ones that just focused on Bumblebee. He had so much animation with him in those sections. Hell, even just down to the way that he would wave uh, to people with one hand, it was just perfect in my eyes, and... Bumblebee is just the most adorable freaking thing in this movie. And now we can get into the cons, which I already got into one earlier on Pro 2 or 3, I don't even remember. But, <coughs> oh, excuse me, maybe it was 4, I don't know. But really, I have two main issues with the movie, which is actually not a bad thing, but one of them is something that confuses me, and then the other one just annoys me. The one that confuses me is that I actually believe that there may be a bit of an issue with uh, the fact that this film exists because it feels like a reboot in the way that it was handled and it definitely goes against a, quite a bit of the canon that was established in the first five films but at the same time they reference things that are from those movies or they reference things that are also referenced in those movies and I don't know, they could just be callbacks but I didn't know how to feel about it. It was a little confusing on that front. 
And then the other part was that some supporting characters just were definitely out of place. And I'll give you two examples. So the first one is Charlie's stepfather. He's this, um, he's this kind of guy who's, who basically comes across as uh, stuck up. Basically somebody who says, you should not be sad, you should always be happy. And he's a very reserved person, you know, always regretful about stealing a candy bar as a kid, but for some reason he knows he knows how to handle himself in a car chase sequence. It's, it make, made no sense on that uh, section. And then the other part was involving um, Charlie's mother herself, who just wants Charlie to move on after the death of her father, and doesn't seem to understand that, that coping and moving on from such a substantial death can take time, even if it's years. But she seems to go out of her way to make sure that Charlie feels really terrible about it. It doesn't work, luckily, because, you know, Charlie's way smarter than her mother, obviously, but it just showed that her mother was kind of a bitch. And also, small complaint, she didn't even ask Charlie if she could borrow her car. She just took it, and Charlie's 18 years old, you know, she's an adult, she can live her life, and she shouldn't have to worry about her family stealing her car. But of course, the two cons, the one that confused me and the one that annoyed me to uh, a certain extent, those didn't keep me from enjoying the movie. Overall, Bumblebee is a fun, very fun film. It's just, it's nice to be able to watch a live-action uh, Transformers movie without all the gloss, the dogs having sex, the slow-mo action, the explosion porn, um, the parents smoking pot, the over-sexualized... Uh, shots of women uh, doing um, stuff, I, I, I don't know why I said it like that, um, the oversaturated colors, you know, that kind of stuff, and I really hope that they continue with this direction down the line. I don't necessarily think that they need to bring back Travis Knight for the next movie. I would love if they did, because I think he did a fantastic job on this movie, but no matter what, they they should not go back to the Michael Bay way of doing things. But yeah, those are my overall thoughts on the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not hesitate to hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button to, you know, keep up to date with everything that's going on on the channel. Thank you once again for watching and farewell until the next video.